Good morning. Are you well? How is this journey going? As from as Wednesday. Any changes? Any improvement? Nothing. It is as before. Wow. If there is a season that I enjoy in our liturgical calendar is this season of Lent. It always challenges me in one way or the other. It gives me a different perspective in life. It, it comes with a new meaning each and every year. I love the music, the liturgical music. I love the readings, the reflections, homilies. They always say something to me. So as from Ash Wednesday, I'm not sure if um, I'll say uh, my my faith has been strengthened or revived in one of the other. In fact, the correct way of putting it is that I've been challenged. Um, more often. As a person, sometimes, well, in our religious life, there is always a timetable for prayers. Uh, the monastery wake up at 5 o'clock daily, uh, 6 o'clock, quarter to 6, you end the church for meditation, quarter past 6, you start Holy Mass, then the day begins. 12 o'clock, we are supposed to be in the chapel for midday prayers. Uh, half past five, six in the evening. It is awesome. So mid-year, sometimes one may miss out on this. Um, maybe you come late or from work or so, you are tired. You want to take a shower and take a nap. But during this time, even if you do take a nap, the moment the bell rings, you wake up and you are reminded, okay, it's the rosary, okay, it's the stations of the cross, okay, it's the night prayer, and so forth. And so, so you just cannot miss out. Um, one Sunday, I'm not sure if we started this season, I appeal to you and I said you maybe have to make up or throw up a problem or a timetable for yourself at home as a family. What time do you pray? I suppose evening prayers uh, because in the morning we are rushing, going to school, going to work. Did you do that? No. Okay. Go back and do it. Praying alone does not help. It may help you as a person, but not you as a family. So try and be together as a family. Just for these next three weeks again, before Easter, and see what happens. Okay? Take scriptures, the readings of the day, if you do not have a liturgical calendar, the readings of Sunday, meditate on them. Pray on your own at work, at school, wherever you are, at 12, the angels. Um, pray when you go or coming from work. Try and do something different. Okay? This is what we do uh, when we talk about giving arms prayer, fasting, and so forth. Do something extraordinary. And I said again, you need to surprise yourself. Okay? In doing what God has called you to do. Today, in fact, I just don't feel like preaching. Um, I feel like giving you a homework. And then I'll have to come back next week. 
and find out if you were able to do that homework. Anyway, looking at the first reading today, we hear that despite their ingratitude, that the people of God, God shows his care for them. He provided them water for he provided water for them in the desert. We may say, despite our ungratefulness to God, God still provides us with our necessities. He has given you a family, parents, children, a roof over your head, food, work, everything. How do you give thanks to him? We may take these things for granted, okay? I qualify for my work. I deserve it. I deserve to have life. I deserve to be happy. I deserve to have a roof over my head. I deserve to have clothing. I deserve to have parents. I deserve to have children, to have my husband next to me or wife. I deserve, I deserve, I deserve. Do you ever give thanks to God for whatever he has provided for you? First reading, remind us that we are so ungrateful. God gives, always provide. And most of us, in fact, we only come back to God when we are in need. We need something. Then God, please help me. We need food. We need work. And sometimes we even come and offer masses looking for jobs looking for success, for development, for peaceful homes or families. And God provides. And most of us, we hardly come back and offer masses in thanksgiving to God. God is, I ask God for this and that, and God has provided. Okay, we take it for granted that I deserve it. Okay, I've worked hard for it. Even when we share this, with people around us. I made applications. I did one, two, three. And finally, after working so hard, I got what I wanted. And you forget that you ask priests and the Christian community to pray with you and to pray for you. And sometimes we even offer masses and say, Father, please pray for me. And you do, do, do not even start praying for yourself, expecting uh, the miracles to happen to you. God provided for the people of Israel, even though they were not worthy of the gifts of God. God provides for you, even though we are not worthy. We are not worthy of the love of Christ. Think of the things we have done. Just the past week, think of the language you have used, your attitude towards others, okay? Think of the manner of your speech, the manner in which you treat other people, you know, the manner in which you treat your family members, the manner in which you treat yourself. Are you grateful? Are you, uh, do you deserve this love of Jesus Christ? But still, God has given you another chance. Nothing has happened for the past two or three uh, weeks since we started this season. This is another moment. This is another chance. You can take this. You can use this for your own good to come closer to God, to repent. So that your coming to church almost every Sunday may be meaningful to you, may be meaningful to people around you. And that is why people who do not come to church insult us left, right, and center. Why should we go to church if so-called Christians act and live like this? And people decide to stay away from God because we do not give them a reason to come closer to Jesus Christ. The gospel tells us the story of Jesus' touching encounter with the Samaritan woman. We know how pathetic it is 
when people become dependent on material handouts. There is no development on that. There is no growth. There is only stagnant, stagnation and in all probability regression. Dependence has this um, corrosive effect. It erodes pride and self-respect. And people can become spiritual dependent as well. How? Maybe you depend on your friend coming to church. Maybe you call each other or send each other messages. Are you going to church next Sunday? Yeah, I mean, I'm still thinking about it. You see, this priest who comes and goes. We do not know who comes next week and so forth and so on. This time there was that man, oh, he says from Merrill Hill, the one who talks a lot. The other one, there was also the one who he says also from Merrill Hill. He said, what well, is it the key? The other one, the, we'll see. No, I mean, no, I, I'm not sure. Maybe I'd rather go somewhere else. You see? And because whoever says this, your friend, and you decide also not to come, do you come to church for a priest or do you come to meet God? Do you come to meet your friends or do you make an appointment with your master, with your Lord? Do you come to church because you want to hear what you want to hear or you come to church for counseling? With Jesus Christ so that Jesus Christ may do something to you so that Jesus Christ may give you this living water so that Jesus Christ may listen to your grievances to your cries to your concerns why do you come to church what makes you come to church and for those elect who are preparing for the sacrament of initiation what makes you want to be a Catholic how is this church different from other churches? How is this parish different from other parishes? What is it that you want to gain? What is it that you want to uh, live for as you come here every Sunday? So sometimes we depend on some people, sometimes we depend on material things. Just a brief story. There was this lady who had to make a daily trip of a mile to draw water from a public well somewhere. Over the years, she grew weary of the journey. No matter how much water she brought home, she always ended up with an empty container. Then one day, she was doing some cleaning in, his, in her yard, doing some garden work. And to her surprise, she came upon a large flagstone lying on the ground. The flagstone was completely covered with moss. Her curiosity fled up. She cleared away the moss, then removed the flagstone to discover a lovely well. She was thrilled. Never again would she have to make that a tree journey to that public well. She now had an unfailing source of water of her own. Most of us, dear friends, have been through years of education and spiritual formation. We have been to this church last year, the other year, and so forth and so on or any other churches for that matter. During these, those years, we have had many teachers, spiritual guides. Most of you, we have met different priests, bishops, in this archdiocese or in other dioceses. And that is why when maybe a new priest comes and he tells you, okay, we'll be doing one, two, three this way, says no father for 25 years <laughs> we have been going west no we are not ready to change and go east no 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 
your so you refuse to change in other ways. So we've, most of us have been here or in these places or in the church and we've worked hard to be where we are today. But the question is, have we been given what we need? Are we spiritually fulfilled? Have you found what we are searching for? Have you found this well inside yourself? Yes, we have listened to cardinal preaching. Yes, we have listened to different bishops preaching. Yes, we have listened to different priests and deacons. Yes, we have listened to each other. But have you discovered something new inside yourself? We are still carrying your old self in you. Dear friends, we are still thirsty. If only our teachers had helped us to find our own way, how much further on we would be now? Surely that should have been their chief concern. But have we tried to go an extra mile to discover something extraordinary, to discover something that you as a person need in your life, in your spiritual journey? It seems to me that this is what Jesus did for the Samaritan woman. She had been searching for love. She had been searching for acceptance. She had been searching for family. She has been searching for fulfillment, for happiness. She has been searching for this spirituality, for something that will attract her or take her closer to God. She has been going all around. She has been meeting different people just as you have been in your life. But still, she did not discover God. She did not discover that what she was searching for was already in her life. What you are searching for, dear friends, is already there. It is in you. The Spirit of God has been given to you. You have been baptized. You receive the sacrament of confirmation. You receive the Spirit of God that enlightened you. Maybe that is the reason why you are still alive today. Maybe that is the reason why you still have your family. You still have your job. You still can walk around. It is because of that spirit which is in you. But because of all the noises in and around us, we fail to hear God. We fail to listen to Him. We fail to discover, we fail to listen to His voice. Ever so gently, Jesus showed me that up until now, she had been looking for the right thing, but in wrong places. Maybe you look for faith from other people. They are not going to give you that. You look for holiness from your friends. They are not going to give you that. You look for the Spirit of God from a priest. He is not going to do that. What is given to us as leader in the church as priest is the key to hang on to you and say and open that door and say this is the door you walk through that door and you find what you, but the person to walk through the door it's you not me i have my own okay so i've been given this so that i can show you the way but you are the one to walk that way i'm giving this task to lead you to Easter, but we are the one to walk these 40 days and 40 nights. You do not really need me, but you need Jesus Christ himself. And he's always available. The question is, do you try and spend time with yourself so that he may come to you? Do you open your heart to him so that he may reside in you? She has been looking for a right thing in wrong places. 
Then he told her that he could give her something better. You have been coming here to look for this water, but I have sweet water to give you. I have something better. Water that will quench your thirst for life. I will give you a meaning of life. I will give you something that will keep you going. Something that will nourish you. Not just your body. Okay? Not just your physical body, but your inner self. Something that will give meaning to your inner self. This is something we have been looking for. Where was this water to come from? Surprisingly, it was to come from inside itself. And this is what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the Spirit of God that has been handed to us, given to us. The spring was already there. It was just that up to now, it had been hidden or blocked by this moss. Move out, remove, clean your heart. Remove this moss, this dead. That is blocking your sight of God. This must may be your attitude. This must may be your language. This must may be your pride. This must may be your development. This must may be your career. This must may be the outside world. This must may be the people, the securities of this world. This must may be your friend. This must may be the things that you love most, the things that you feel you need for you to progress in life. Move it away for you to discover this Christ. Otherwise, come next week, the fourth Sunday, you still, you still be nowhere. Fifth Sunday, you go to Easter, you still be trying. Move that moss that is blocking your sight. Move that moss that is hindering you from seeing or listening to God so that come Easter you may be joyful, may be happy. Okay? Whether we have things that people need or not. Come Easter, you will be spiritually fulfilled. Jesus is coming to you today, dear friends. To give us or to unblock, to unlock, to roll this stone that is blocking us to discover what is inside ourselves. Are you ready to be with him? Are you ready to journey with him? Are you ready to listen to his voice? Are you ready to spend some time with him? This is all a celebration. We pray for that enlightenment. We pray for that strength to let go of all this chaos, of all this dust, dusty world, of all this noisy stuff that we are hearing day in and day out, so that we may discover ourselves and discover our love for Jesus Christ. May God bless you and may God fill you with His love. May He fill you with His Spirit. So that as we journey along towards Easter, we may be, we may discover what is meaningful to us and give glory to God day in and day out. Amen.